Hello world, this is your host, Melody Garcia. And I'm Janie Lacey. Welcome to our podcast, Life Unscripted. A podcast like none other, as we take you on a journey to share real life stories of some of the most iconic influencers in the world who had broken the scripts that once chained them. We will hear about their stories of breakdown to breakthroughs, golden wisdoms, and actions that took their life into meteoric levels. Our goal is to always provide our listeners values and applications that will allow you to live your best life. Welcome and enjoy our show. Welcome to another episode of Life Unscripted. This is Melody Garcia. And this is Janie Lacey. So Janie, we are in for another exciting event this evening. We have, I mean, this person is just beyond incredible, gifted, and amazing. I can't speak enough about him. Uh, Today, we're going to journey into the musicality world, or uh, again, it's my first love. It's singing, it's music, but wait until you hear this man. We would love to welcome you to our show None other than Will Gittens. Hi, Will. What's going on, everyone? Hello. <laughs> so, Jamie, would you like to tell Will about our show? What, what is Life Unscripted? We are so excited to have you, Will. Since Melanie has introduced me to your music, I am a fan. So, and I love people that go after their, their passion. So I want to tell you a little bit about Life Unscripted and why it makes sense for us to even have you on our show. You know, Life Unscripted is focused to do just that. We unscript our life of limiting beliefs, perceived expectations, conditioned by society, Mm -hmm. generations, culture, religion, and ourself that prevents us from being happy and free to live the best fulfilled life in all sectors. So when people like yourself go after their passion and through your music, we can watch you on Instagram and we hear you speaking with your fans. We, mm-hmm. we can see that it's your DNA, that you are in your purpose and in your, your passion. And, um, and being um, someone who has a long future ahead of them and is just getting started in the game and you are already making such, a, such an impact. So, so give us a little bit um, history and Melanie's also going to share with the viewers your, your bio, but tell us a little bit about how you got, got started well, um, so I was born in Trinidad and Tobago originally, which is kind of crazy. They had just had an earthquake yesterday. Did y'all hear about that? No, yes, we did. I did. Oh, okay. But yeah, so I was born there, and my father. Uh, hold on a second. Yeah, I'm on a um, conference call. Sorry, I didn't even tell my brother I'm on a conference call. <laughs> it's unscripted, Will. Unscripted. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> oh, okay. It's all good. But um. But yeah, so like I, I was born in Trinidad. And my father is actually um, a singer, songwriter, musician. So I am whatever everyone sees of me is just a reincarnation of what my dad was doing when he was my age. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Or when I, you know what I'm saying? So it's like he was in his prime and he was living in his passion. And I was born into him being in his prime. And so just imagine... Like if I had a, a, a kid right now, I don't have one by the way, but <laughs> imagine if I had a kid and they were seeing me doing this every day, doing videos, doing music, just writing and recording and doing and all these things. Like they, it doesn't matter if they didn't pay attention or, or, or not, it's just going to be in the background of their mind. So yes. that's the kind of the environment that um that got passed on. Man, I don't know why people are, hold on one second. Yo, it's open. <laughs> it's open. <laughs> Yo, what's up, bro? I'm on a, I'm a conference call, so I'm going to say what's up to you after. Yeah, yeah. Man, it's 
like every everything was so quiet until <laughs> until all that stuff happened. But um, it's called life, and it's unscripted. But we go with the flow. <laughs> yeah, let's go with the flow. Let's go with the flow. But um, uh, but yeah. So so just answer the question is just I just had that environment and. When I came to America, I kind of strayed away from music for a couple of years, but I just feel like, like you said, purpose. Like, I feel like God put me on this earth to do music, and I didn't even know that until life situations just happened, and I just gravitated right back to what my purpose is, which is to bless people through the through the, the sound waves. <laughs> to bless people through the music, but also blessing followed by your father's blessing. So I think oh, it's definitely. important that um that we let people know who you are and give them some background because melanie and i and life unscripted are a fan of yours so melanie could you tell the the viewers a little bit more about about will absolutely so i mean i wish we could keep him forever so i'm gonna just take this <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you who is not familiar with will gittins he is a 25 year old singer songwriter as he mentioned from trinidad and tobago at the recent Berkeley School of Music graduates of vocal ability and musicianship has gained him worldwide recognition as an outstanding new artist. He also, and with, in reference to social media, Janie, check this out. He is a social media sensation that has generated a heavy following of 1.6 million followers on Ooh. Vine over 143,000 on Instagram and climbing every day over 310,000 on Musical.ly and over 60,000 on YouTube. His smooth vocals takes you on today's hottest songs, wins the hearts of everyone that hears his voice. And he had released his EP on August 19, 2016, which then has generated over 2 million streams on Spotify. Will is also, I think has also now released his second EP back in January. He had shared the stage with the legendary artists such as Vince Gill, Amy Grant, Layla Hathaway, mm -hmm. and he's also a touring guitarist, playing and recording artist with is it Jadena? Yeah. And he is going to be touring the U.S. and Europe in 2018, and after that, the rest of the world. In fact, he just came back from Africa. But I mean, this is like a short snippet of this musical sensation, and I love the fact that you led with the fact of you know, you're blessing others through your gifts. So we're going to pick it up from there. Uh, okay. You said that something led to you, right? That, that literally carried you in this purpose. You realize what your purpose, God-given purpose is on this earth. Uh -huh. So can you take us to that point, you know, of what was the deepest pain that became the catalyst to now this calling you have on your life? Okay. Well, um, the first, the first thing that really made me uh, just really, refocus my life and figure out where everything was going i don't i've actually never really shared this with much people uh especially my followers but i will in the future um so i have four sisters and two brothers but my little brother passed away in 2009 and he was special needs so he had cerebral palsy he couldn't talk um and so yeah my family just took care of him and he passed away when he was 12 years old so it was very sudden he had seizures all the time and it was just his time, you know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes you just can't control when, when the timer that God has on people's life. And I thought that he would have lived longer, but, and I'm the one who found him, who, who found him dead. So that kind of was a, a huge turning point in my life. And I was talking to God a lot and I, I just was so confused and I was lost. I was doing a lot of sports at the time and I realized that sports wasn't going to be what my future was. So I kind of was like, what else can I do? What else? I might, like, I think that I'm talented in, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so I just, for some reason, it just, music just started to become a bigger part of my life. And then that's when I, I decided to go to music school and the rest was history. Um, so I would say that was the first, like, turning point of, of my career um, in music, you know what I'm saying? And the second thing being, I, I went on the show, The Voice. You guys know The Voice? And so, um, can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. When you're oh. talking, we, we just mute ourselves so that we can hear, oh. you, we can hear your lovely voice nice and clear. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. That confused me. I was like, dang, should I have to say all that? No. 
<laughs> but yeah, so the second thing is yeah, I went on The Voice in 2014, season eight. Uh, I went through the whole process. It was like five months. <laughs> and as you guys can see already, I, I'm a person of faith. I um, have a strong belief in God. And so the whole time I was like, man, this is, this is God's plan. I'm about to go on this show. I'm about to kill it. America is about to see who I am. The world is going to see who I am. And everything is going to be awesome. And I did the blind audition for The Voice, and they didn't turn chairs for me. And that was a very kind of shocking time for me. I, I like was I was frozen when I sang, and they didn't turn chairs. And then I was sent home. So I had just finished college at the time, and I got back to uh, – because I was living in Boston, and I had to move back to Nashville with my parents. And so I had no following. I, nobody really knew who I was, but I knew I still had the talent. So I went back home to Nashville, and – I wouldn't say I was depressed, but it was another point where I was just like, I thought this was what you had for me, God. Like, you know what I'm saying? What? No. And so I just just went went into to the basement of my parents' house and I started recording videos and doing what I do. No. And that's what that's how I became Will Gittins, the one that everyone knows. I, I was in the basement of my, my parents' house and I just would set my camera up like how I have it propped up right now talking to you guys and just pick up my guitar and play. And so one, a couple of videos started to blow up and then the rest was history. Like everyone was like, oh my gosh, you're the best thing ever. And I was like, Ooh. <laughs> You know, when we have uh, pain and we go through trauma, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a psychotherapist, right? So, uh, mm -hmm. but when we go through pain and we go through trauma, you know, we usually have two choices. We can have a choice where, we collapse into that pain or we start searching. We start searching for meaning. And on that journey, you know, as you're talking about getting to that basement, I'm hearing you were down in your, your valley days. And sometimes when we're in our valley days, you know, and, and mm -hmm. as a man of faith, in, in that journey is where we do discover our, our purpose and that God will put us in a place where we have to lean on on him and to be at this place now. And we know that God has great, mighty things for you um, just to see your, hear your voice and to see your passion and to see your fans and how you carry yourself is very authentic. So Thank when you, you think about that basement, you're down in the basement, you're finding your purpose, you're thinking about the loss of your, your brother, which is, until people go through that, you know, it's really difficult to understand the pain. You know, if someone's also losing my sister um, at a young age, you know, that pain is so deep. Mm -hmm. And in that darkest moment, in that deepest pain, and then through your journey in that basement, what would you say would be, if you look back now, was your aha moment, you know, and the light bulb came on and you knew that this is what God wanted to do for your life. And this is where you were going to walk in and you were going to use everything inside of you to come out lyrically, to be able to come out through your, through your music, which comes out so passionately and so beautiful. I would say that, um, I don't think the aha was in the basement. I think the basement was the groundwork that needed to develop because I'm a songwriter. And at the time, I, I, I wrote a couple songs then. It was, it was, this was 2014, 2015 when all this, when I was living in that basement. And it's funny because sometimes I'll tell people that that's the lowest point of my life. But then I remember somebody corrected me and it was like, man, that's the highest point of your life because that's the point where you didn't have anything and you made something out of nothing, you know what I'm saying? And so after doing that, it's like, um, oh man, I lost my train of thought. What was the question again? Yep, you had said that that the aha moment was not in the basement. Oh, um, okay, cool. Yep. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, so it wasn't it wasn't um it, it wasn't at that point. The aha moment for me was after I had built the following and I started to release my original material. And I had a song and it's called A Day With You and that song, like you said, you're a therapist. It was, it became therapy for people. And I had no idea that I knew people told me that my voice was like, it was beautiful. And that man, I, I could I have my baby listen to you before it goes to sleep. And it always loves when it hears you. I have a, a baby that's crying. And every time I play your voice, it stops crying. And it's like, but some people took the song. The song was about a long distance relationship that I had that you know what I'm saying? It's like, I wish I could spend a day with you, you know? But a lot of people that has lost a loved one started to um, use that song as, man, I just lost someone or I lost someone a couple of years ago and I listen to this song all the time. It makes me feel better. 
And so I would say that was my aha moment because 